Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is Moon Math Goddess. Thank you guys so much for being here. Your continued love and support here on the channel. For those of you that would like to book a private reading with me, you can find my email down below in the description box. Just send me an email and I will provide you with more information on booking readings as well as other services uh, with me. So today's pick your card reading is one that was subscriber requested. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder from um, subscribers, um, sometimes when I do get into doing the pick your card readings, um, I forget uh, sometimes to do readings for, for singles. Um, so that is what we're going to be doing today. Um, we're going to be looking at what is next in love for you. For those of you that are, you know, working towards manifesting new love, new people, new situations, um, relationships, hopefully, <laughs> into your life. So we're looking at what is next in love for you, um, who that person might be. We'll try to find a little bit about this person's personality, um, what you can expect, and then also when might it happen and then any other details that do come through in the reading i will definitely let you guys know maybe what type of a situation you're dealing with um like i said hopefully you know crossing our fingers that it is something that is uh worth your while okay um you know this is a general reading i do want you guys to keep that in mind if you want something more specific to you um looking into your own energy um, I do offer a singles private reading for you guys <clears throat> in which I go over, you know, what your current energy is in love, blockages that you might have, um, and then we'll look at what is next in love for you, you know, who's coming towards you, that type of um, deal. Um, just to kind of see where you're at, you know, because as you are, you know, working towards manifesting love into your life, sometimes there are certain beliefs um, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, limiting beliefs, uh, holding on to things from your past energetically that can affect the quality of people that you attract to you, as well as people that you find yourself attracted to. Um, we have to keep in mind that the universe responds to frequency and vibration and whatever vibration or frequency we are a match for, that is the type of people and situations that we will bring towards us. So um, your healing is super important. Um, making sure that you are letting go of any limiting beliefs surrounding love. You are learning to love yourself, you know, feel more confident in yourself, know what your worth is, what your value is, and you embody the energy of love and then when you're really work working towards you know all of those things within your own energy it can help you to attract better people into your life so that you're not dealing with you know situations that end up causing pain or heartache um you know things of that nature so uh yes singles what's next in love who what to expect, when might you meet this person, you know, maybe how, we'll see whatever details do come through. So we do have three crystals out for you today. We do have a strawberry obsidian for pile number one. We have a bloodstone for pile two, and then we have this yellow crystal. It might be jasper um, for pile number three. I'm not quite sure what the name of that one is, um, but I am going to be adding in one of these little cards here to help you with choosing. However, if you do already feel drawn to a specific crystal, you can go ahead and skip right to uh, the timestamp that will be located pinned in the comment uh, section. So let's get into it. Let's pull one of these little animal uh, spirit cards. So something for pile number one. What is next in love for pile number one? Who is coming towards them? for pile number one and I'm just going to put them all face down for now and we will look at them together with your crystal a little close a little closer so pile two with the bloodstone and pile number three and if you do feel like you know none of these mm, 
I want to say if they don't really feel right for you, um, you can go ahead and go into the uh, playlist. I do have other singles readings there as well. Or like I said, I am available. I'm always taking bookings for private readings. So pile number three. Okay, so let's see what we have. Pile one with the strawberry obsidian. We have the lizard. <clears throat> so the lizard and the strawberry obsidian for pile number one. Pile number two, we have the wolf. And that is with this bloodstone. This one might be a little bit harder to see because it's a little dark, but it does have this pretty little orange, reddish orange little stripe in it. That is bloodstone. So the wolf and bloodstone for pile number two. Okay, and then pile number three. We have the deer, and that is with this little yellow crystal here. So the deer and this yellow crystal for pile number three. And we're setting the intention that this is for new love. However, I do not control the messages that come through, okay? <laughs> Just read the cards um, and feel the energy that's there. So uh, that is what we're working with today. So the lizard and strawberry obsidian for pile one, the wolf and the bloodstone for pile two, and then the deer and the yellow little crystal here for pile number three. Timestamps will be down below and I will see you guys at your reading. Hi, Pile One. So those of you that resonated with this lizard card, this is going to be your reading. Um, so some of you, this person could potentially be a fire sign. Okay, uh, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. We'll also look into uh, what comes through with your uh, tarot. I do want to pull oracle cards, I feel, first. Uh, just to kind of get a feel for what this energy is or situation. So let's do that. So singles, what is next in love for you? Let's see. Pile number one. What is next in love? love for you okay so we have listen <clears throat> is the first card out let's see what else okay so I'm gonna have to cover up cover up a little bit it says fed the F up okay <laughs> fed the F up um, let's see. What is next in love for pile number one? Okay, so we've got it's complicated. So when we get the tarot, we'll see <clears throat> what is going on here. But <clears throat> and it makes me kind of feel like this lizard archetype energy might be something that is out of balance and we'll talk about that a little bit let's pull what is next in love for pile number one we have something is brewing okay so <clears throat> your first card that you had says listen and it says someone has difficulty truly listening and may only be hearing what they want to hear Listening involves paying attention to words, body language, gut reactions, and subtle energy shifts. It's time to slow down and pay close attention to what a person is revealing through their communication or lack thereof. Okay, so it already kind of makes me feel that <clears throat> there could be some issues with this new person. 
um, in terms of their communication. Okay, because we do have fed the F up here. <clears throat> and it says walking away, dissatisfied, annoyed, and upset. Okay, so this might be you, okay, <laughs> that decides that, you know, this person, the way that they interact um, could be something that is not really working for you, okay? Um, we also have it's complicated here, and it says many external factors are complicating this relationship, making it difficult to take things to the next level. So this could be a person that, you know, comes into your life. Um, I will say it makes me feel because of the energy that's coming through with this person that this lizard archetype is kind of taking on the shadow aspects of this card, um, in which I'm going to just kind of... It's from the wild unknown animal spirit. <clears throat> so it says this type of person is someone who is instinctual, sensitive to the subtle and a dreamer. It says the lizard is an expert in the realm of sensory perception as if it has a sixth sense. The lizard hears what is yet to be spoken and sees what is yet to manifest. Although this is an amazing gift, it can easily wear the lizard down. Big crowds, lots of travel, or overstimulation will drain a lizard of their magical essence. This card is an indication to pull back from the bright lights and big city and return to the inner artist who's been whispering your name. So when this energy is in balance, it is artistic, telepathic, and very spiritual. But when it's out of balance, it can become elusive, non-committal, and flaky. So... Being that we have kind of like shadowy energies that have come through here with this person's energy, it makes me feel like that person is kind of coming in in the shadow aspect of this energy where they could be somebody who gets overwhelmed, you know, with the new connection. Um, maybe there's certain things that are kind of happening in their personal life or it kind of makes me feel like they could come across as uh, emotionally unavailable. Okay. Um, and like I said, with this F fed the F up here, you could get upset, <laughs> get upset at them to say the least, like, w you know, feel frustrated. I feel like, okay. Um, so we're going to pull the chair. I'm going to put this up here and we also have something is brewing here and it says breaking point losing emotional strength and on the verge. Okay. So it could be that this person, you know, could be someone who's at a breaking point. Of course it can go the other way around too. You know, it could be that this person is someone who, you know, is coming in, you know, ready for love. And then you might be on the, on the other side of that, where you are the person who, you know, is allowing certain, things from your own past to create resistance to you allowing yourself to open up to love where this person might get frustrated with you. So of course it could be that way too. Okay. But we're going to look at the tarot and get a little bit more information. But yeah, this kind of makes me feel like, like there's some issues with this new person, the way that this is kind of playing out here, um, with getting things to progress and, you know, some of you might choose to pull back, pull away. Um, so let's pull some tarot and see what else is going on here. <clears throat> okay, pile number one. What is next in love for you? Who is coming towards you? Who is this person that's next in love? We have the Hermit. Look at that. Okay. So Hermit is Virgo energy. Um, the Hermit could be a person who is a little bit withdrawn. They might uh, need to spend time alone. Um, they could be somebody who is more reserved, quiet, shy, potentially, um, someone who is, you know, the hermit energy is about rest, healing, 
reflection, introspection. Um, and this lizard card was already talking about somebody who, when they get overstimulated, like by large crowds, parties, being around too much, you know, people, stuff like that. Um, they could be somebody who feels like they need to pull back. Okay. Like they get, they might get, uh, triggered or even stressed out right away, you know? So with the hermit energy here, maybe it's a person who has been single for a long time, um, or even a person who is a little bit unsure about whether or not they're even ready for a commitment. Okay. And of course we would ask like, why are you even dating? if you're not ready, <laughs> but it happens, right? It happens. It definitely happens. Um, so let's see what else. What is next in love for pile number one? Who is coming towards them? Tell us more about this person, this situation, what to expect. We have the four of swords. What is next in love for pile number one? We have the Eight of Cups. Yeah, so the Eight of Cups is about letting go or walking away um, from something that is not very fulfilling. Okay, so like I said, we, all, we have these two energies here about walking away here dissatisfied, feeling annoyed and upset. Um, we have the eight of cups here, which is matches that energy. And then we also have the moon. Okay. The moon, uh, is Pisces energy. We also have Pisces with the eight of cups. Um, this could very well be a person who has anxiety. Um, a person who leaves you in a place of feeling confused, uncertain, having doubts. They could be someone who has doubts about uh, you, okay, about trusting love, opening themselves up, um, could be something there as well. Some of you might even be dealing with uh, a Libra here, okay. Let's pull one more. What is next in love for pile number one? Who is this person? We have the five of pentacles in reverse. This makes me feel like this is a person who might end up ghosting, actually, okay? Um, or who might shut you out, who doesn't open up, okay? And yes, frustrated. You might definitely feel frustrated, like you just need to walk away from this person. Now, as I was saying in the beginning... You know, especially for those of you that, especially for those of you that um, notice that there is a pattern, you know, with the people that you connect with, you might feel like you are dating, you're putting yourself out there, but you might feel like you keep meeting the same person in a different body. Okay, and this is where it's important for you to kind of recognize that pattern. If you continue to meet people who are emotionally unavailable, okay, avoidance, um, people who are noncommittal, you have to take some time to also reflect within your own energy about, like I was saying, your feelings, your emotions, um, your any self-limited beliefs that you might have. If you have your own, you know, insecurities, low self-esteem, lack of confidence in yourself, um, an energy of despair, uh, an energy of lack, feeling that you are uh, without love, lacking love, um, you have your own fears and insecurities and stuff like that. Those can be things that actually lower your vibration, okay? If you're still holding on to anger or resentment, say, for, towards a past person, you know, uh, if you've dealt with rejection or abandonment in the past and that has been a wound that you haven't really worked through, those emotions and those thoughts um, surrounding that, this makes me feel like this could be a person who does have their own abandonment issues. And what I was seeing underneath the deck is the Ten of Pentacles, the Knight of Wands, and the Hangman. 
Queen of Wands. So Ace of Pentacles. It makes me feel that this connection with this new person is something that starts off very intense. Very strong attraction between you and this person. This person is going to be super attractive. Okay, super good looking person. They could be somebody who, you know, comes across um, as excited and, you know, like ready to, yeah, ready to date, ready for love. You know, they could be a little bit um, um, kind of making you feel like, wow, this is, this is going really, really good. Like I'm, I'm, you're, you feeling, um. I almost kind of feel like this person, not that they're putting up a front, but more or less that they might feel, because this could be genuine, that a person actually feels like, okay, I'm ready to date. I'm putting my past behind me. And then once things start going and moving, they realize I'm not ready yet. Um, so I feel like this person is going to come in um with a very passionate energy, there's going to be a very strong attraction between you and this person, you know, not that this person is, I feel like leading you on, of course, you know, that could happen. But with the 10 of pentacles being here, I feel like this person is wanting, you know, to find their person, a long term relationship, you know, and, and kind of showing you signs that they're all about it. Um, but then with the hangman energy here, there could be a little bit of stagnation that you find here, okay, with this, with something that's not really progressing, even though in the beginning of the connection, it may show you that, okay, we're so attracted to each other, there's, you know, there's, there's chemistry here, um, and, you know, this person is making me feel like they want a relationship, but something changes here, okay? I do want to look at that it's complicated here a little bit. It says many external factors are complicating this relationship, making it difficult to take things to the next level, okay? So kind of like I said, it could be something that comes in very, very intense, very passionate, um, where this person is kind of feeling like, hey, like I'm all about, you know, uh, dating and opening up and then something changes here. And I feel like it, the, the issue here is more or less that there could be some insecurities that this person has, you know, they could be afraid of really opening themselves up emotionally. Um, like I said, some of you, this person could end up, it makes me feel like things are hot and cold with this person. You know, and the, until you get to that point where you decide, okay, no, if you're not, if we're not moving forward here, then I need to walk away. Um, but yes, I feel like this person could be a person who has a tendency that when, when things start heating up, when things start to get more intense between the two of you, um, develop, starting to develop, you know, a little bit more that this person actually pulls back. Okay, maybe they do with the lizard energy here, get a little bit overwhelmed, you know, with feelings, with emotions. And I do feel it is because a person has some insecurities here. Okay, they may be somebody who does have abandonment wounds from their past. Um, they could be somebody who, like I said, has maybe spent a lot of time being single um, or has some things that they still have not healed. The moon energy can talk about a lot of fears, a lot of doubts, a lot of insecurities, um, subconscious, okay? So I do want to, like I said, I want to look at um, that and see what's going on here. But we also, we have a lot of Pisces energy here um, and also fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, uh, and Sagittarius. Um, and I want to look at that. Um, we've also got Taurus energy here, Taurus, Virgo, a Libra. Okay. So let's pull some more here and see why is this complicated? Why is this situation complicated between Kyle one and this new person? 
Why is it complicated? The Fool. The Fool is about taking a leap of faith. It's about opening yourself up to possibilities. Okay. So we have the Fool there. What else? Could be Aquarius. Why is it complicated? The Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords is about truth. It's about clarity. Um, and then we have the Hierophant here, which could be about serious commitment. Com uh, um, yeah, serious commitment here. Hmm. Some of you, this person could have been somebody who just, who may have got out of a, um, a serious relationship or even a marriage. It could be some, maybe somebody who's divorced. Um, I feel like there might be a lack of clarity for you surrounding like where this is going. Okay. Where this is going. Hmm. Underneath the deck, I'm also seeing the devil here. Okay, it could be Capricorn. And it could be that this person is, again, the devil brings in a lot of fears, a lot of, you know, self-limiting beliefs. Um, the devil can also talk about emotional manipulation codependency, attachment, addictions. Um, I don't like this. Okay. <laughs> I don't like this for, for, you know, you having to deal with something like this. Um, hmm. I don't know. Let's get a little bit more. Hmm. Okay, what is next in love for pile number one? perspective here we have engagement and new love new love perspective engagement and I'm seeing memories on the bottom uh, again this just kind of makes me feel like you're dealing with somebody new coming towards you that This person could be allowing their past to affect them connecting with somebody new. Okay. Like their perspectives on, you know, commitment, marriage, engagement, things of that nature. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm seeing we have together forever here at the bottom as well. It says this love will continue always and forget forever together or apart. Happily ever after, it says in here. And then we also have clarity here. Clarity. For some of you, it makes me feel like this person is someone who still hasn't let go or moved on from an ex-partner. Okay. They're still holding on to things. And so I feel like this makes it difficult for this person when connecting with you here that 
I feel like difficult to trust love again, you know, to talk about feelings, to open up with feelings. So in that respect, it can be, you know, something that is a little bit misleading for you because you feel like, okay, this is it. Like this is going good. We have chemistry here. We're both attracted to each other. Everything seems like it's, it's going amazing. And then it hits a wall. There's a change. Where there's, there's, you know, a lack of clarity here. I feel like, again, surrounding commitment, relationship, like this lizard was saying in that shadow energy, it becomes elusive, flaky, non-committal. Okay. So, you know, of course, with any time you're dating and opening yourself up to meeting, connecting with people, I feel like it's very wise for you to be discerning. Pay attention to red flags. D try to keep yourself grounded. Try not to think too far ahead. You know, with something, of course, when we're dating, we're dating to try, I say for the most part, we're trying to date to find the right person, you know, to really make sure that they are the right person that we are investing our feelings into. But sometimes we can't help our feelings, right? They just happen. Um... But I feel like it's important for you to keep yourself grounded and don't overlook red flags. Like if you're noticing, you want to make sure that a person is being consistent with you, you know. And like I said, our wherever our vibration is at, that is the people that we're going to attract. Whatever vibration we match at, the universe responds to our vibration. So... I would say if this is something that happens to you quite often where you get annoyed, like, why does this keep happening over and over again? Why do I keep meeting people that are not even ready for commitment or, you know, people who are non-committal, people who are only looking for situationships or friends with benefits? Look within your own energy, you know, your own beliefs about love, um, your own self-worth. If you're somebody, like I said, who has low self-esteem, Okay. Um, I remember when I was still dating, this used to happen to me, like every single date that I would go on. And it happened probably for about two to three years where I was constantly attracting men that were emotionally unavailable, who had low self-esteem themselves, um, who had their own abandonment issues. And it was, you know, and it took a while, of course, because I was frustrated and having my heart broken over and over again, because I'm somebody who feels things very deeply, you know, <laughs> so I had my heart broken over and over and over again. And I was like, why is this happening? You know, but I have also gone through a lot of trauma in the past, and that greatly affected my own self esteem, my own self worth, where I was holding on to people that were, you know, only looking for um, you know, situationships. Um, and this was before they would call it what we call it now situationships, right? <laughs> um, that was way before that, um, that I was dealing with this kind of stuff. But yeah, I started to just kind of look within myself and say, okay, I need to work on myself. I need a break. I need time to be single and just work on me. Um, and I noticed that a lot of me working on changing you know, a lot of my own patterns of behaviors, okay, were something that really helped me to attract better partners, uh, better quality people, you know, people that were more in alignment with what my vision was as I brought my own energy into alignment with that, okay? So yeah, it just kind of makes me feel that this person is somebody who, yes, at the beginning, things are amazing, things are passionate, things are like, wow, this is like, we're so, there's so much here, there's so much chemistry, but then there's a change here. And I feel like it is because this person, honestly, looking at this energy is not ready. Okay, they're not ready. So, um, of course, remember, you always have a choice. Okay, you always have a choice. If you're noticing that there's a type, this type of person who's coming towards you, you can choose to walk away. You can choose to, you know, not, uh, 
what do I want to say? You can choose to notice the red flags, okay? Sometimes they're there and they're loud and they're screaming at us, you know, in the beginning of a connection with the person. And sometimes we overlook them. We're like, oh, you know what? Yes, this happened. But, you know, I'm, I really like this person. So I'm going to keep going. And then you see another red flag and another one and another one. And then what happens then? Okay. So this is where it's important for you to kind of use discernment. Okay. Be very discerning. Take your time. Keep yourself grounded. Pay attention to the person's pattern of the behavior. Make sure that they are consistent over time. I would say once you get to that like three month, if it even makes it that far, that three month, four month mark, if that person is continuing to be consistent with you and still putting in the effort, this to me looks like something changes here. Okay. Um, with this person, I do feel for many of you, you could, and if you're watching this reading when I am posting it, which today, I don't even know what date it is today. Today is March uh what is it today i think today's the 7th march 7th um 2024 okay like i was saying there's a lot of um uh there's virgo energy here okay taurus pisces is really strong here we are still in pisces season okay pisces season will will take us through uh march i think it's about the 19th 20th somewhere around there um, before airy season starts but some of you it could be that you do meet this person especially if you're actively dating you could very well meet this person during Pisces season some of you it might be Taurus season okay which is going to be April and May okay um, and then some of you you know really depending on when you're watching this it could be a, a connection that kind of comes in during Virgo season for you um, as well which I believe is what September around there September what else did we have here um, Aquarius we already passed Aquarius season though okay so maybe you know if you're watching this later maybe Aquarius season could be the season that's going to be coming up for you I want to ask spirit what your advice is here okay with dealing with a person um, like this You know, if, if this person is coming towards you and it's not really your cup of tea, don't be afraid of walking away, okay? Know your worth. And if this person is continuing to pull back, not open up, not be sure about, you know, connection moving forward, then you know, keep, keep your standards high. Don't, don't take less than you deserve. Okay. Let's see. What is pile one's advice for this new love coming in? The three of swords. What is pile number, the page of pentacles and the five of wands. What is pile one's advice? The three of cups. Okay. Well, I kind of feel like with this too, especially if you know that you, you yourself do have some healing to do. Like I said, the universe responds to whatever our frequency is. That's what we match for with people. And sometimes it's a good indicator of where we are at energetically. Okay. Um, so I, I honestly feel like spirit saying, you know, Be selective, okay, um, because the Page of Pentacles is about planting the seed for something new, okay? Don't lose sight of what you want to, I feel like, as well. If you're somebody who's ready to settle down and this person is not it, keep it, keep it moving, okay? Because the Five of Wands is also about um, comparison, okay? The Three of Cups is about connecting, socializing, going on dates, meeting people, connecting with people. Um, you know, if this person has an issue with giving or investing more time and more energy into you and you are someone who's looking to settle down, you know, I feel like Spirit's encouraging you, keep dating, keep connecting, keep, you know, and maybe for some of you this means 
uh, stepping outside of your comfort zone a little bit, right? Trying something, switching something up in terms of the way that you date, okay? But compare it, compare, you know, find out what it is that you truly are desiring, looking for. And if this person is not checking those boxes, don't be afraid of moving on, okay? I'm seeing the tower at the bottom. The tower is about divine intervention, you know, so if things are not really flowing with this person and, you know, this person is, things are kind of falling apart with this new connection, it's not it's something that's not lasting, let it fall apart, okay? Because the tower energy could be something that helps to break down certain illusions, you know, that you might have surrounding this person. And for you to let go, sometimes the universe might force us to have some type of epiphany or realization, okay? Perhaps this connection might also be triggering certain things within you that you have to heal, bringing your attention to certain things that you have to heal with inside of yourself, certain changes that you might have to make, maybe with certain people that you, you know, um, date, um, things of that nature, Okay. But I definitely feel because all of these experiences that we have, they all teach us something, right? We learn something through the experiences that we've had, that we have. Um, I feel like Spirit's saying continue to, to stay in your power here, okay? Don't give your power away to anyone or any, you know, situation here. For some of you, this is going to be a need for you to, you know, really work on your self-esteem, really work on your confidence in yourself, don't lose sight of what it is that you want. If this person isn't quite in alignment with that and that, you know, you feel like you're giving too much, they're giving too little. I mean, one of your first cards out was fed the F up. So if you're dissatisfied, you're unhappy, it's not in alignment for you, do not be afraid of walking away. Okay. And opening yourself up to something else. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave this here for you. Pile number one. I do hope this is helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, pal two. So those of you that resonated with the wolf, this is actually earth energy. So some of you, this new person could be an earth sign, uh, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Um, so we'll talk about the wolf a little bit more, but I do want to uh, pull some oracle cards just to see um, what kind of a, you know, person, situation um, you could be attracting towards you, okay? If this is something that's going to be worth your while, okay, so we're going to pull a couple oracle cards and then we'll get the tarot out. So singles for pile two spirit, what is next in love for pile number two? Who is this person? What can they expect when this might this new person come in for pile number two? what's next in love okay so we have disoriented and let's see what's next in love for pile two we have an apology hmm Okay, so we've got two of those. What is next in love for pile number two? All right, so let's take a look at these first. Okay, so disoriented. It says you are experiencing a potent merging, wow, of past life energies, present cycles, and future possibilities. You are honoring more than one aspect of your true self and balancing the old and new energies. You are releasing an old identity and embracing a new one. You may need extra rest as you integrate two worlds. Okay, so I'm having a feeling that many of you that chose this pile could be going through a lot of um, spiritual growth, spiritual evolution. Okay, this makes me feel like you could be somebody who's um, clearing... I feel like old cycles from past lives, maybe patterns of behaviors or cycles um, and merging into these new energies. Okay. Um, 
let's see what else we have. We have apology here, and it says a confession, okay, mending a relationship or rebuilding. Confession. Okay, we'll see where this goes. Um, we have materialistic love. It says, let's hope this relationship is not just about the money and gifts. You'll only end up feeling miserable. Okay. We have burning away. It says, release from past, freedom from pain, sorrow, and regrets. And then the other card that you have is protection. And it says, angel in disguise, watching over you, a kind and warm heart. Okay, so I want to pull the tarot and see what we're dealing with here, but we've already got some clues. Mm, okay, let's pull the tarot. Let's see. Pile number two. Hmm. Pile two. What is next in love for you? Who's coming towards you? We have the Empress, which could be Taurus or Libra. What's next in love? Who is coming towards you? The death card. We've got Scorpio energy here. What is next in love? Who is coming towards you? The ace of pentacles. The knight of cups. And the three of cups. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Now I will say for some of you, because we do have apology here and it says mending a relationship or rebuilding. Some of you, this may very well be someone from your past. Okay. It might be, <laughs> but I know some of you were like, no, I want new love. Remember you have a choice. You can say no. Okay. But some of you, there could be, because I'm also seeing at the bottom of the deck, we have Judgment here, the Four of Wands, the Three of Wands, um, the Queen of Swords could potentially be an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Um, yeah, I'm feeling for some of you, okay, especially if this is somebody that is returning, okay, there is a choice to make here. There is a decision. Um, because there could be somebody who's coming towards you who is that, that wants, I feel like this person still has an attachment to you. Okay. First off, this person still has an attachment here. Um, they've been missing you a lot, thinking about you a lot. And there's a decision here to be made surrounding getting back together. Okay. Um, yeah. So you'll have to make a choice here. If you want to, you know, see this person. Um, there's also water sign energy here too. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, um, Scorpio. Yeah, and I said air sign energy. But yes, it makes me feel like this person is potentially, I'm seeing the Ace of Wands here, um, potentially wanting to um, revisit, reignite the connection between the two of you. Okay. Um, now for others of you, you know, I feel because we do have judgment here at the bottom, judgment is about releasing our past. It is about releasing the pain, the burdens, the heaviness, the resentment, the anger to find renewal within self. And you do also have burning away, release from past, freedom from pain, sorrows, and regrets. And then you have this disoriented energy here, which is talking about um, merging, right? Past life energies, present cycles, and future possibilities. So like I said, I feel like many of you are going to be shedding away and clearing a lot of karmic energies, cycles, you know, that you've been kind of moving through. And I feel like this is especially important, especially if you're actively dating, 
you know, in order to help you to clear past life karma cycles, things of that nature, you may have been, you know, dealing with people with uh, connections that have been helping you to clear, right? Clear those cycles, bringing certain things up for you to be able to clear and release. So I feel like this is huge in that the judgment card is about rebirth. So, and then you also have the death card here, which is also about transformation. And then we have this beautiful new beginning here with the Ace of Pentacles and the Empress. This makes me feel that some of you may have been, and it could also be the person that you're connecting with. Um, because, you know, I am, as I said in the beginning, the universe responds to our frequency and our vibration. Okay. Some people choose to do the inner work. And when they choose to do the inner work, they choose to heal, they choose to work on their beliefs and their confidence and their self-esteem and their self-worth. It changes the people that you connect with, right? The, the people that you attract towards you, it changes. And so this makes me feel that there really is this beautiful new beginning for you, pal, too. And I feel like many of you have been doing the inner work that chose this pile, Um you know, maybe things feel a little, I don't know if I want to say they feel like a little crazy right now, or they feel like you've been dealing with a lot. And, and you're probably questioning, like, why is all this happening? I feel like it's all happening for your highest good. Okay, even though some of the things that we go through can be pretty painful and pretty challenging. But I feel like you're clearing out a lot of this energy from past lives. Okay, burning away here. Um, in an effort to kind of rebuild the self because you do have the ace of pentacles here which is an opportunity for a new beginning the empress is here and the empress is a beautiful energy of love um and so i feel like with the knight of cups energy this is going to be somebody coming towards you okay we have an angel in disguise it says watching over you a kind and warm heart the Knight of Cups is the romantic type. It is a, a person who is very heart-centered, okay? They too, right? They too could be a person who um, is going through all of this transformation. But if you, as a person, have been working on your healing, you know, and really kind of becoming a better version of yourself, guess what? that changes the people that you attract to you, right? You're going to attract people who are, you know, they're not going to be perfect, right? As well as you are not perfect. We all are, you know, have things that we need to, to focus and work on. But when you were committing to doing the inner work, you will then connect with people who acknowledge the things that they have to work on within themselves. And instead of being scared and running away and not, you know, um, facing their own inner demons, I feel like this person will be somebody who is ready to grow with you, okay? Because we have the Knight of Cups energy here, and the Knight of Cups is about being vulnerable. It's about putting your heart out there. Hold on, I'm going to open this window up a little bit. It's about putting your heart out there, wearing your heart on your sleeve. Um, I do feel like there will be a new person for you, pile one, that is going to be very loving, very nurturing. Okay. Um, being that we do have materialistic love here and we do have the Empress. Okay. <laughs> the Empress is a beautiful energy. It's very abundant. Um, it is also Taurus energy. Okay. Um, earth energy sometimes can be a little bit materialistic. Okay. Wearing beautiful clothes, you know, nice cars, um, you know, of course, any sign could be, you know, a little bit on the materialistic side, but I'm also noticing the Empress here in this card. She's wearing this, looks like beautiful earrings, this whole, I don't know, gorgeous chest piece thing that she's got going on here, but she looks beautiful. Um, so I, I feel for many of you, maybe yes, maybe it could be a person who kind of spoils you a little bit, who is very romantic, very charming. You know, the Three of Cups energy is about joy, happiness, um, socializing, going on dates, having fun. You could potentially meet this person at a party or maybe even when you're while you're out with friends, okay? And I'm kind of having a, um, I'm having a feeling 
that with the confession being here, that this could very well be a person who you, hmm, it kind of makes me feel like this person might already be in your circle. This person might be somebody who is not like new, new. Maybe they're new for you to date, but I feel like you might already have this person in your life already. Okay. It's kind of what this makes me feel like. Um, what else do I want to say? I do feel like this person is going to be somebody who um, family is something that is very important to them. Okay. They're going to be somebody who is very abundant. Somebody who is... Um, what do I want to say? Um, somebody who has a good sense of humor. Somebody who is fun to be around. Okay. Somebody who is very kind, very generous, very nurturing uh, type of person, um, person who is very smart. Okay. Very smart, very well-spoken, very assertive, um, very honest type of person. Okay. A person who you might feel, a, um, like an instant attraction with chemistry is, I'm kind of feeling like off the charts, but I feel like even though there's, there's chemistry that's here, it almost kind of makes me feel because I'm noticing there's the ace of wands here. And then on either side of that, we have the queen and the king of swords. And this kind of gives me the vibe that, and this, I feel for those of you where, you know, the intellectual type or a person who really just gets you where you and this person can kind of have conversations, have fun together, kind of like talk to each other for hours and you don't get bored. It's just like, I feel like you guys are going to be connecting. Yes, there's chemistry here and there's attraction, you know, that's obvious, but I feel like you guys are going to connect with on, on another level mentally that is like nothing that you've experienced before, you know, where you can talk to someone and you feel like, wow, <laughs> this person is like, they get me, you know, you're both open with each other, honest with each other. Um, now, some of you, I feel like you could with this new person, um, you, there could be a little bit of a guarded energy. And I only feel it's because both of you are coming. I mean, you could share past life energy with this person very much so because of that disoriented energy. There could be past life energy that you feel with this person. Okay. And, and so with that, there could be kind of like this instant recognition that you feel like, Ooh, I know my soul knows you. My soul remembers you. Um, kind of feeling. Okay. Um, yeah. So I feel like, you know, this, this person is going to be somebody who is not just anyone. Okay. They're not just anybody. They're somebody who is I feel like very much in this lifetime being brought because we have protection here. Angels in disguise watching over you. This makes me feel like this connection or you meeting or connecting with this person from your past life is somebody that your spirit guides, ancestor, spirit team is kind of bringing for the two of you to align with each other. And I do feel, you know, there is, there is karmic energy that both of you are clearing. Okay. So there could be some important things to learn here. I don't feel like it is just an ordinary connection. That's just gonna, there's a reason here. There's a purpose here. Okay. So I would say when this person does come in, pay attention. Okay to things, the experiences to, uh, that you're having to the, to the, the, the things that you're learning about yourself, that you're learning about the other person. Some of you could both be, uh, air signs here. Okay. Gemini's, uh, Libra's Aquarius. Both of you could be air signs. Um, like I said, some of you, this could be a person from your past. 
okay, that is that is trying to come back in. And of course, like I said, this is your choice, okay, whether or not you choose to let this person back in, if you accept their apology and try to rework the relationship. Um, but for others of you, like I said, I feel like you will have past life connection with this person. There will be instant attraction. You're going to connect with this person intellectually, um, be able, like I said, to talk to each other for hours, laugh, have fun with each other. Um, I feel like there will be a, a very strong sense of familiarity with this person. Even if they are somebody completely new and you've never really talked to them before, you're going to feel like we just vibe. We just connect with each other on that level. You know, there's none of that kind of like awkward silence and, you know, it, it's like you both just flow. You both feel comfortable opening up to each other, talking to each other. Even though, like I said, for some of you, there might be a little bit of a guarded energy here. And I feel like this is what you are kind of learning with this person is really allowing yourself to be open to receive. Okay, because the Knight of Cups is about being vulnerable. And maybe if you guys are both coming in with a little bit of a guarded energy, both of you in through this experience are kind of learning how to bring that guard down and, and allow yourself to connect with somebody on an emotional level. Okay, to, to really just kind of let love in. Let love in um, is kind of what I'm seeing here. Um, I do feel some of you, I'm getting that this is a soulmate. Okay. They could be a past life soulmate here. This will be a soulmate connection for you. Um, what else do I want to say? There could very well be the potential for a, a relationship here. Okay. Commitment. But remember here, okay, that. As you are going through this experience with this new person, pay attention, like I said, to, to things, to the experience, to what you're learning about yourself, about the other person. Um, because as you are kind of going through and purging and clearing here, um, this requires you to kind of reflect within yourself. Okay. Am I being guarded? Do, am I holding on to certain beliefs surrounding love? I feel like the whole point of this is helping both of you to transform your feminine energies. Okay. Feminine energy here. And it could be a connection that teaches you your self-worth. It could be a connection that kind of inspires you to really work on your healing, to learn to love yourself. Okay. Now, if this is a person from your past and they're coming back in, okay, we have sorrows and regrets and also an apology here. Mending the relationship, a confession, and this person could be coming towards you to tell you, hey, I love you. I still have feelings for you. The Knight of Cups is about announcing feelings. You know, somebody could be coming towards you and telling you, I want to take you out. I want to see you. I want to go out with you. Um, let's start rebuilding our connection. And for some of you, it could just be, you know, if, especially if it's new, um, this person coming towards you and telling you that they like you and, you know, they want to, they want to get to know you a little bit better. They're feeling chemistry that's here. Okay. I'm having a feeling because of the, the past life cycles and, and stuff like that with the disorientation, it kind of makes me feel that there might be a little bit of a bumpy start. Okay. A little bit of a bumpy start with this person. Because there's a merging of energies here. You're, you're kind of letting go of the old version of the self, right? The old version of self, old beliefs about love, the old version of you, and then stepping into the new version of you. And I feel like this person is doing the same thing. And you guys might be, might be meeting and connecting with, with each other as you're going through that transformation, you know? And that can get a little frustrating sometimes because you might feel like, okay, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready for love. What's wrong with them? <laughs> How come they're not ready yet? And I feel like it's because both of you are meant to come together to align, to kind of work on embodying these new versions of self that are open to receive love. Okay. And sometimes that transformation requires both you and this person to openly 
communicate with each other. Maybe some of you are learning through this experience also how to communicate your needs, you know, uh, to work on your communication skills with relationship. There's always something we can learn, okay? You know, it's not coincidence that we meet a person. They're brought to us for a reason. And I feel for many of you, it is past life. You have past life energy with this person. Some of you do. You've, you, you've known this person from your past. Um, what else do I want to say? I think I'm going to pull some more Oracle cards here and see what else is going on. And then we're going to get some guidance for you. But yeah, I, I feel like this connection here is going to be marking the, the your new beginning with your new chapter, your new cycle of love in this new version of self is what I'm seeing with this. Okay, now we do have, what do we have here? We've got Scorpio energy here, Taurus. So some of you, Taurus and Libra and Scorpio, um, depending on when you watch this reading, okay, I'm uploading this today, March 7th, 2024. Some of you, this could, this person could come in as soon as Taurus season, which is going to be when this Taurus season start, um, uh, April, what is it like 19, 20 or 21, something like that through May 19, 20, 21, somewhere around there. Um, and then we also have Scorpio season, um, which happens, when is it? The October, November. Okay. So that could be that this, this happens around that time. Um, we've also got Libra season here and Libra season is, what is that? September? I can't remember if it's August, September or September, October, something like that. Okay. Around Libra season. Um, but let's see. Yeah. And I, like I said, for some of you, you might already have this person. Okay. That's kind of already circling around you. Maybe you haven't really gotten involved with them. Um, some of you, I feel like there has been maybe some type of reconciliation here going on a date. The two of you having maybe even a heart to heart here. Okay. Is what I'm seeing for some of you. Okay, what is next in love for pile number two? Future, wow. Okay, what is next? We have broken heart here. We have, look at that, self-love. It says self-love is the cornerstone of, sh of sharing true love and it says, cherish you. Hmm. We've got illusions here. And this is what I feel like you're kind of breaking down here and changing and transforming is illusions for both of you. Okay. Especially both of you. I'm feeling both of you kind of coming in from both of you having gone through a uh, heartache here. You know, and it could be that both of you are kind of like, okay, I'm going to work on myself. You're going to work on yourself. You know, we have a carnival here. Well, wow. maybe some of you are going to be doing something fun. Maybe you meet them at some type of outdoor fun activity with the carnival here. Going to do something fun with each other. We also have the wings of love here and it says love is transforming you either by flying in or out. Love is transforming you either by flying in or flying out. So yeah, I definitely feel like this connection is going to be one that is very transformative for you. Okay. And then we have frigidity here. Now, those of you, because I am seeing, you know, both the queen and the king of swords here, you know, this could be that this person has gone through a divorce. I mean, you could be, have gone through a divorce too. Um, the king and queen of swords can be divorced people. It can also be single people. Okay. Um, it can also be a person who has been a little bit detached from their heart space, you know, and being that they're 
both there with that ace of wands in the middle, there's passion there that I feel like maybe both of you are a little bit guarded and that's where you're needing to really kind of work on both of you softening, transforming into this energy of the Empress is being open to receive, allowing yourself to be vulnerable. So we have broken heart here with frigidity. So this makes me feel that if you or the other person even have been acting a little bit cold or detached with each other, this is where I was saying it might kind of start off a little bumpy, okay? Because if you're somebody who has heart been heartbroken, of course, you might be guarded, you know, afraid of letting that guard down. And so these are the illusions, right, that you're going to be clearing. The other person is going to be clearing through self-love. Like I said, you could be inspiring each other as you're talking about your past. When we talk about openly and honestly about sometimes the things that we've gone through, it really helps us to heal, you know, and if, you know, both the queen and the king of swords, they're good listeners, you know, so it could be that both of you open up, you're honest, you both talk to each other, you both open up with your stories and share things with each other. And that kind of makes a person or both of you creates a space where both of you feel like we can talk to each other and we're going to see each other. We're not going to judge each other. Okay. You feel more comfortable, you feel more safe, you feel more protected, like you could let that guard down and be able to connect back into your heart space. And I feel like that's what this connection is doing. Okay, that's what this connection is doing here. Um, I want to get a little bit about the future. Uh, this kind of makes me feel that maybe... I don't know. I don't want to say anything yet. Let's see. What is this future energy, sir? What is this future energy here? The world. We have an ending here. A completion of a cycle. We have the Page of Cups. And the Ten of Cups. Okay. Mm. Okay. Now for some of you, I feel like, like I said, there is, there's merging and closing of, of cycles here. Um, I feel with the page of cups here, you could have in the near future, some of you could be having an apology. Okay. That is actually coming in from someone. Um, Some of you, I'm getting an engagement, a proposal. Some of you, especially if you are trying to, and this, and this might only be for one of you, okay? So I'm not going to say that every single person that's watching this general reading is going to go through this. But for some of you, I'm see seeing um, a pregnancy, okay? A pregnancy in the future with this person, okay? An engagement, potentially marriage, okay? with this person. Um, now that might not be the case for all of you. Okay. But I'm definitely seeing that. Okay. So what I want to do, I want to ask spirit, what is your advice? Okay. To close out your reading, what is your advice with this connection with this person? What is your advice? with this new person coming in. We've got the King of Wands. What is your advice? We've got, what is this? The High Priestess. The Two of Swords. Ten, wow. Ten of Pentacles. And then we also have the the Six of Swords here. Okay. Now, what I feel like Spirit is saying here is it's going to be especially important for you during this connection to really tune into your intuition. Okay? Being that I feel like this, this connection for you is one that is divinely guided. Um, 
you need to connect in with your higher self, okay? Because your higher self is going to, in a way, kind of be guiding you along, um, assisting you through, okay, this experience with this person. Um, and feeling there's also a need for you with this person to really kind of step into your power here. Don't give your power away. This, this this whole experience that you're having with this person, like I said, is very important for your soul's growth, your evolution, you kind of clearing away these past life karmic cycles, okay? Um, we do have the Six of Swords energy here um, as well. Like I said, I kind of feel like there's a little bit of a bumpy energy here, but I feel like Spirit is kind of confirming here that you're going to transition into a more calm more peaceful, more grounded energies. I do feel like there will be, um, there's potential for future here. Okay. For you and this person to have a long term relationship with each other. There could be some bumps in the road, a little bit of a transition period. Okay. In order for you to get there, but you also have to remember that you and this person coming together are clearing a lot of karma here. And so it could be and feel a little bit like this is saying disorienting. Okay, a little confusing, but it's kind of like you're moving through this energy. So it's almost like spirit saying, stay the course, trust the process. Okay, trust the process. Even if there is a little bit of, mm, I don't know that I want to say stagnancy, mm, maybe, but remember the point of this here, we have self-love here and you kind of opening yourself up, being vulnerable, because I'm feeling that both of you coming in are both guarded, okay? And and I feel like in this connection is something that's teaching you self-love um, for both of you to heal and clear and transform, okay, um, is what I'm getting here. So it's going to be especially important for you to really connect into your intuition, Um I feel many of you might be receiving or will receive downloads from spirit, you know, about what your next steps are. Okay. Giving you a uh, confirmation about you moving through with this person. I'm feeling for many of you, this could very well end up into something very long-term stable, um, in which you do end up for some of you having a family or building a life with this person. But there are, there's a lot of energies that have to be cleared here. Okay, so I'm feeling, trust the process. Okay, be patient. Try not to, I want to say try not to get so frustrated, okay? Because there's there's some energies that are, that are, that you're moving through here, both you and this person. Um, yeah, that's what I'm getting here. Okay, all right, so I'm going to leave this here for you, pile number two. I do hope this is helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, Pile 3. So those of you that resonated with the deer, um, this is also Earth Energy. Um, so this can be Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We will also be looking into the tarot to see what other zodiac signs might come through. But the deer is a very uh, nurturing, calm, gentle, compassionate type of energy. So this may be certain aspects of this person's uh, type of personality. Now, when this energy is out of balance or out of alignment, it can become a little, um, I would say more protective type of energy. Um, but we'll look at to see what is coming through for you, but we're looking at what is next in love for you. Okay. Those of you that are single and, you know, dating open, um, to receive, we're going to be looking at who, you know, this person might be, what you, can, what you can expect. So really kind of looking into what type of situation, you know, are you kind of drawing towards you, attracting towards you. And like I said in the beginning, you know, a lot of what we experience in our dating life is reflective of what our own energy is, our own vibration, our own frequency. Okay. We, depending on where we're at, our feelings, our emotions, our thoughts, our beliefs, that makes up our vibration. So if we have, you know, insecurities, fears, rejection, abandonment, you know, things like that, we might attract people who match that energy. 
people who are avoidant, people who are non-committal, emotionally unavailable, when we truly embody the energy of love and our beliefs and our values also align with that energy and we are open to receive that, we will match and connect with people who match that vibration. We attract better quality partners and we're attracted to better quality people. Okay, so already this is a very sweet, very gentle, beautiful energy. I just want to kind of see with the other cards to see are we coming in with it in a positive way or are we picking up more of some shadow energies that are here? So let's see. Pile number three. What is next in love for you? What can you expect? Who's coming towards you? Okay. We've got surface level. We'll look at that in a second. I want to pull the rest of the cards. What is next in love for pile number three? We have choice here. Single, okay, <laughs> single. Um, what, let's see. What is next in love? Okay, we had two that came out with that one. We've got fairy tale romance and also on again, off again. Okay, so let's look at this stuff. We've got the surface level here. Let's look at that one first. And it says, there is a frequency mismatch. It says one party has deep spiritual connections and has sacrificed their ego for higher learning and the other has not. Each path is sacred. However, you must never settle for less than you are worthy of. One party is immature and requires lessons, learning, and growth, whilst the other has learned their lessons and is ready. Someone is out of their depths, and this partnership is out of balance. Okay. So we have choice here. And it says indecisive, debating, multiple options, and also hesitancy. And then we have single, and it says available, currently no other partner, and also open to dating. And then we have on again, off again. It says someone, someone's entering your life who may disappear and reappear. Don't get trapped in this cycle. Okay, and then we also have fairy tale romance here, and it says this romance will feel magical. It will be an exciting adventure and perhaps a happily ever after. I want to see what the tarot um, is bringing in here. Let's see. Okay, pile three. next in love for you who's coming towards you what can you expect we've got the eight of cups is what we're starting off with the six of cups The Ten of Swords in Reverse. The Page of Swords. Ugh, and the Tower. Why? <laughs> Why? Okay. Nine of Wands is at the bottom. The Seven of Wands and the Strength card. And yeah, okay. Five of Pentacles is here and the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so the type of person I feel like that's coming towards you, um, Pile 3, I'm, I'm seeing that there is immaturity here, okay? We've got the Page of Swords, uh, the Page of Wands, 
and the Knight. So the Knight of Pentacles. This kind of makes me feel like this. And of course, it could be the other way around. It could be you as the person who is who has the growing to do. Okay. And it could be that this person is kind of in a way coming in kind of as a lesson for you to maybe learn how to better communicate, how to change certain beliefs that you might have. Um, and of course you do, you do have a choice to make. You can either level up, um, the same goes for the other person. They have a choice. Do they, le do they level up or do they re do kind of, they revert back into the old patterns of behavior? So the nine of wands energy makes me feel that either you or this person could be somebody who is really guarded, who has gone through a lot. And there could be a little bit of a guarded and even defensive type of energy here. We have the seven of wands. Um, some of you could be connecting with a Leo. We also have Gemini energy here. Um, Scorpio. There's also fire sign energy, uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Now I do feel like this connection with this person with the page of wands energy here will be something that is very adventurous, very fun, very exciting, very passionate, very flirty. Um, I also feel like this person might be somebody who it's difficult for them to express themselves. Okay. Um, and I feel like it might be because they've gone through some, some challenges here. Okay. You could very well be that person who is, who embodies the energy of the deer with a person who is, does have the growing to do, or like I said, they could be the person who is very nurturing, loving, and has done a lot of their own deep work. And you are the person who in that moment and through this experience, you have a choice. Do you open yourself up and work towards changing your own patterns of behaviors to align with this new energy, right? This almost feels like spirit is testing you here, okay, honestly, because especially with the frequency mismatch here, I feel like at that point where there is kind of like that mismatch, um, I feel like someone has a choice to level up and they either do or they don't. Right. Because sometimes we could be we could have in our conscious mind, we can have this thought, OK, yes, I'm ready for new love. I'm ready for something better. And then spirit brings in the something better. And can you align your energy with that to make it work? Or do you stay with those same beliefs, limitations, you know, Things that could be blocking you from leveling yourself up, right? Because I know that those of you that are that have, you know, you're actively dating, I'm sure you've met people where you were all about it. You were ready to date. You were ready to put yourself out there. You're putting your heart out there. And then you're connecting with somebody and you're like, okay, why aren't they ready? You know, so that in, in a way can be kind of like a test for them. Are they leveling up or are they not? So I feel like there is somebody, you know, that's gone through a lot of um, pain here. And that could be you, could be them. They could be holding on to a lot of stuff from their past or even childhood here. And so mm, the Eight of Cups energy here, it makes me feel like this could be a person who is a little withdrawn. Okay, because we do have on again, off again here. Um, and it makes me feel because there is a little bit of a guarded or defensive energy here. Okay, the strength card is also about gentleness, kindness. Um, so it does feel like one person's energy is a lot more grounded than the other person's is. Okay. Um we have the five of pentacles here and the five of pentacles could be about abandonment. It could also be when a person is uh, insecure. Okay. Now that might be you. It could be them. If you have abandonment issues or, you know, rejection wounds that have not been healed yet. Again, we have a choice here. We can either choose to hold on to those past wounds or we can allow ourselves to really kind of open up and start to trust love again. Okay. So it does feel like there's a little bit of a test here. Okay. Um, the Knight of Pentacles can also be somebody who is very slow moving. 
meaning that this connection is steady, but it's also a little on the slow side. There's little baby steps that a person might need to take, especially if they're start, you know, trying to kind of overcome. Um, I feel like the important message with strength here too is that we do not try to force someone, especially if they are somebody who's got some wounds here. They may feel like I need to take my time. I'm, I'm, you know, I want to be more cautious with how I choose to move forward in a connection. I do, I do feel with the fairy tale romance here that it's going to be a very beautiful connection between you and this person. But with the off again, on again, it kind of makes me feel like because the person could be letting old things kind of impact their connecting with you. And they, and as a result of that, they might be somebody who feels like they need to move a little slow. Okay. Sometimes we can get a little frustrated with people and feel like, okay, what, when are we going to take the next step? When is something going to change? When is something going to happen? And again, this brings me to making the choice here. Okay. The person might be indecisive. Should I trust this? Should I move forward with this? Um, I having a feeling this person could come in as very discerning, maybe a little bit protective or guarded with their energy. Whereas the difference is with the deer energy, it's very nurturing. It's very open. Um, and you could be somebody who, you know, connects with somebody who is a little bit guarded and you kind of, you know, create this safe little space for them to feel like, okay, I can, I can let my guard down. I can feel safe. I can feel loved. I can allow myself to receive love. I do feel with the two of cups energy here, um, that this person and you will have a very strong, passionate connection. You might be able to really connect with each other on a deep emotional level here as well. I do feel like there is potential for future, um, commitment relationships, something that's solid and tangible between you and this person, um, in the future. Okay. Um, Something that's on the horizon for you is the potential of having something solid and tangible. I do feel like, though, like I said, this person could be coming in as a little bit guarded. They've got some work to do. They've definitely got some maturing. We've got pages here. Okay, so if we're talking about a grown person coming in with page energy, the page is about being a novice, a student, um, immature. Okay, so this person might need to do some maturing in terms of their actions or even the way that they, they communicate. Um their way of thinking needs to change. Okay. And it could be, you know, we've got the five of pentacles here. This person could be a little bit on the insecure side. Um, just remember, okay. With, with people, you know, not to put anybody down, but remember that it is not your job to fix people. Okay. It is not your job to fix people. They have to be willing to do their own inner work. You cannot force people. Okay, and that's what I was saying. The important thing with the strength card is to be gentle, kind, compassionate, empathetic. That's all you can do, right, with somebody that's got some wounds here is be loving, be nurturing. And they're either going to be open to receive it or they're not. They have to have a willingness to want to change and to work on themselves. Of course, off and on, hot and cold stuff can get annoying, okay? But I feel like as, as long as you keep yourself grounded you know, and, and letting that person know, yes, I'm interested in you. You know, I feel like it could be something very beautiful. I feel like there's a lot of potential here for growth, for change. The tower energy can also talk about upheaval, especially if there's off and on again, stuff like that. It could feel a little chaotic. Um, but the tower also helps us to have realizations, epiphanies, to release illusions, Okay, especially if a person is kind of holding on to past energies and they kind of have a belief that makes them feel like, okay, I can't trust love. I can't trust anybody anymore. You know, the tower would help us to release that illusion and to really open ourselves up to receiving love. Um, so I do feel like, you know, there could be a lot of excitement, a lot of passion, a lot of flirting between you and this person. Um, it could be very fun, very exciting. Okay, but yes, I'm definitely getting a person with the Knight of Pentacles energy. It could be a little uh, connection that kind of, mm, I feel like a little slow moving. Okay, um, as long as it continues to progress, that's what you want to look for. Okay, even if it is a little slow, sometimes certain connections need us to slow down. Okay, and to really kind of be present, be present and 
you know, the Knight of Pentacles is about baby steps. And I have a feeling this person could be moving that way because there is a little bit of discernment here because of past wounds. I feel like this person may have gone through a lot, you know, and especially if there's a frequency mismatch, like I said, we've got one person that's done a lot of deep spiritual work, sacrificed their ego for higher learning, and the other has not. Each path is sacred. It says, however, you must never settle for less. You are worthy of less than you are worthy of. Okay. So like I said earlier, you can't force someone. Okay. They're either open. They're going to choose to change or they're not. I feel like there's a lot of potential here as long as, you know, this person is open and has a willingness to change. We cannot force them. Um, some of you, the whole off and on thing might be a turnoff. And you might be like, I'm over it. I'm not going to deal with it. And you might decide, I need to walk away. Or at least until I feel like this person gets their you-know-what together. You know? You could decide, okay, you need to be sure about what you want. If you're not ready for something yet. I'm going to pull back my energy and I'm going to pull back and walk away here. But I have a feeling for some of you, this could be something, you know, it might need a little bit of time, a little bit of encouragement. You know, sometimes, you know, people, other souls need our support, need our love, need our gentleness, kindness, and compassion to kind of help us to get past a stage that we're in. You know, I'm sure you can think of people who have just kind of come in to your life and it's kind of like just when you needed somebody and they were there to support you just kind of coming in out of nowhere and it kind of helped you through a really important time in your life and I feel like you might be that person that could be helping this person to really make some changes with growth you know of course like I said it's not your job to fix people to take on projects okay project partners um, but you can certainly be a huge or have a huge impact on their life as well as, you know, you could be the person who needs to change, to grow, to evolve. And this person could be showing you that it's safe for you to open your heart again. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing there with this. Now, for some of you, I'm seeing Leo season. Okay, could be could be something uh, really important for you. Leo, Leo season, um, which I'm, I'm uploading this today, March 7th, 2024. Okay, so Leo season is going to be this, what is it, July, August, okay? Um, for those of you that are watching this, you know, later, it could be something that happens later in the year during Scorpio season or, let's see, some of you it could be something that happens a lot faster too. Um, I'm getting for some of you, it could be the next three weeks that this person does come in, some of you two months Okay, two months from now from whenever you watch this reading. Okay, let's pull some more cards and see what else. And also with something that is surface level, you know, it could be that there's a really strong attraction. But if one person is willing to open up and the other person is, you know, a little bit skeptical of doing so... It can make it hard, you know, to connect. I do feel like there is a connection here with us seeing the two of cups underneath there, but someone has some maturing to do or learning how to speak up, learning how to use their voice, learning how to communicate. Okay. Uh, learning how to express yourself. So let's see. What is next in love for pile number three spirit? What can they expect? Who is this person? Pile number three. Now, some of you with the choice here, too, it could be that you're dating multiple people. You know? You could be dating multiple people, and it could even be two different situations that you deal with, and on again, off again, and then you have a fairy tale romance with somebody who is very nurturing here. Okay? Some of you, I feel like with the Six of Cups energy here, um, the Six of Cups can talk about soulmate connections sometimes past life, um, kindred spirits, best friends type of vibe. Like you just feel like you, the two of you really connect with each other in that way. 
So we do also have equality here. Some of you, it might be a Libra, okay? Or maybe something that happens during Libra season. So what can you expect? Equality is about fairness. It's about balance, um, honesty, integrity. We also have privacy here. Maybe for some of you, this person might have a little bit of a difficult time opening up and being honest. We have an opportunity here. And rebirth. Let's see what else. The pile three. Yeah, we've got falsity here. So it almost makes me feel like you could be dealing with somebody who's masking feelings. Like I said, maybe having some difficulty with opening up. And I'm also seeing discord here. Discord, which means that there could be some conflict here. Okay. Some conflict. You know, it could be a person with privacy here that um, mm, might be a little bit closed off here. But we do have rebirth. Um so it could be that there is a lot of transformation, you know, that, that happens. Look at that. Past life is at the bottom um, with the key. Okay. Hmm. For some of you, I feel like this could be something that... Um, I don't know, especially if it's past life. I feel like when we reincarnate and have somebody who's kind of returning from a past life, there's something that we're meant to learn here. Um, something important for us to take notice of. What are we experiencing? What it, What is happening, you know, in this situation? I feel like this is where we need to kind of really pay, you know, attention here um, to what is, what's happening. Okay. We have the key and past life. So it definitely makes me feel something important here. What else for pile number three, Spirit? Serendipity. Okay. And then we have illusions here. And this is what I feel like this being released here with uh, the tower. We have synchronicity and signs. It says align to your desires. Notice signs and symbols for validation. Underneath the deck, we have choice. Choice between two. Your heart already whispers the answer, listen. So some of you, like I said, maybe it's two different people that are coming in. Okay. We have serendipity here and synchronicity and signs. So just like I, I think it was pile two that kind of had a similar message here. It's going to be especially important for you to pay attention. Okay. So to serendipitous meetings, connections with people. Um, what you feel, right? If something is kind of playing out here again for you to clear or, you know, paying attention to, to synchronicities and signs, your intuition. Um, some of you might have a choice between two people that you are dating or two people that are in your life. Um, and this says your heart already whispers the answer. Listen, okay, who is going to be the better um, I feel like fit for you, you know, if you are very well dealing with a person who's off and on inconsistent with you and it's creating more chaos in your life than anything else, more heartache, the person is, you know, pulling away, detaching from you. And then you've got somebody else coming in, you know, that is nurturing, that is loving, but maybe a little bit more slow moving, but showing you that they're committed, go with the person who's the slow mover, but showing you that there's consistent, steady growth, the Knight of Pentacles that we saw. Because yes, it can get frustrating, but if that person is showing you time after time after time that they're committed here and they're just a little slow in terms of their movement, you know, of course you have to do whatever you feel is best for you. But I feel like if I had a choice, right, <laughs> between choosing between the person that's off and on, off and on, off and on, hot and cold, and, and, and a person who is showing me that there's commitment that's there and they just want to take things slow, that you allow yourself to try it out, 
you know, see where it goes. Okay, so let's get some uh, guidance for you. Pile number three. I feel like maybe for those of you, if you have somebody come towards you and it feels like there's past life energy here, like I said, it's happening again in this lifetime for a reason. Maybe there's the key here. Maybe there's something that you're unlocking here or something really important here. So it's really important for you to pay attention, like I said, to your intuition, signs, synchronicities. They could either be giving you guidance in a positive way or even warnings. Okay, warning. Sometimes... We can have people re-enter our life from past life and, you know, the, the flashing lights might be going and spirits like trying to send us a warning message like, hey, watch out. This is going to be something that could create this tower energy for you. Okay. Um, I had that experience happen to me. I think it was like about 10 years ago. And... I misinterpreted, okay, <laughs> I misinterpreted um, the signs and I took it in a positive way and it was the complete opposite. It was the complete opposite and it created a lot of my world being completely flipped upside down and I was like, oh my goodness, why? <laughs> why did I go through this? But yeah, it's I misinterpreted, okay, and this was way before I was ever connected to spirituality or anything. I was just lost a lost soul um, and I misinterpreted and now when I look back at it I'm like oh my goodness Monique why didn't you see that why didn't you pay attention and I was like in la la land you know rosy clear glasses all the way and I well, yeah it was it was quite the experience okay you have to really pay attention <laughs> really pay attention um, and making sure that you're not, you know, of course, with the illusions, they're not seeing something that's not really there, especially if it's a false person or somebody who just, you just kind of feeling the vibe and you're like, no, there's something not right here. Something's off. Something feels off. My gut is telling me there's something off. Trust what you feel and, of course, make the better choice for yourself, okay? So let's see here. Pile number three, what is your advice? What is your advice? Okay, we have the Three of Wands, the Five of Pentacles again, the Seven of Cups, and the Hermit. Okay, so I feel like Spirit is saying here, in the near future, and for some of you, like I said, this could be something that's happening within the next three weeks. Um, some of you, it could be something that happens by July some of you Virgo season. Um, seven months for some of you, okay, from whenever you watch this reading. But what I'm seeing here is that <clears throat> with the Hermit, this is about introspection and reflection. Time of solitude. So maybe for some of you, if you are, and Spirit is kind of acknowledging, if you are someone who has the lack of, uh, or scarcity type of mentality as it relates to love. You feel like love is separate from you. You are without it. You don't have it. You're feeling just kind of like this energy of despair, desperation when it comes to love. Really take some time to work on that feeling or that belief, okay? Because that can also create illusions within you surrounding love. Because if we're feeling this feeling of emptiness and void and we're looking outside of ourselves for love, that can create a lot of illusions for us where we could be, you know, taking less than we're deserving of, right? You know, especially let's just say that those of you that deal with an off again, off again, you deserve better than that. You deserve more than that, right? Than a person who's not sure about you, okay? But because if we're, if we're suffering from low self-esteem, we're insecure, you know, we've got abandonment wounds, we've got rejection wounds, we might take that. I've taken it in the past and it's because I, I had abandoned, I mean, I still have abandonment wounds that I still am working through. But you have these here, if you've ever, you know, been ghosted, rejected, abandoned, and it really hurt deeply. It really affects, it wounds our ego, right? It makes us feel bad. 
So if you are someone who does feel that feeling of emptiness or despair or desperation when you're looking for love, um, <clears throat> I feel like with the hermit here, spirit is really wanting you to take some time to really reflect within yourself, really work on your healing. You know, if you are, you know, still single, really use that time as you are when, while you are single to really work on you. Okay, to also help you to release any illusions that you might have around love. The Seven of Cups is also about choices and options. Um, you know, the Three of Wands energy here is about longing and anticipation and waiting. You know, and if somebody is creating this illusion and keeping you kind of stuck in that place where you're waiting and waiting and waiting, and they are more or less choosing to withdraw and abandon you, you know, this is where you're needing to kind of also pull back your energy, you know, and may choose to kind of walk away here. Okay, especially if there's discord here with the person that where it's just you're just feeling like it's not working. Okay, this is where spirit is telling you settle, don't settle for less than what you know you're deserving of. Okay, hold out for something better, explore other options. Really take some time to think about whether or not the people that do come into your life are really in alignment with what your desires are. Okay. We have temperance here at the bottom. Temperance is about being patient. Okay. For something that is balanced, something that is equal. So if you feel, you know, just because someone comes in and, you know, you're feeling in a way desperate and longing for your person and you're you're settling for less than that i feel like spirit's saying really work towards finding balance within yourself do the inner work know recognize what your worth is and what your value is and be patient you know as you align your energies with the person that you're truly meant for because i i truly feel that you're someone who has a lot of love to give okay a lot of love to give and i feel like Holding out for somebody who is going to show you consistency, dedication, commitment to actually building something with you is going to be far better for you in the long run and save you a lot of heartache. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave this here for you. Pile number three. I do hope this is helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next reading.